Hello, I'm Michal Koutny. Uh, I work in L3, and today I prepared a short talk about uh, classifying tasks into control groups. So we should we will start with a short introduction uh, of uh, the kernel APIs that uh, we are provided with. Uh, then I will look more onto the user space side, uh, that means libcg and uh, systemd. Uh, then I will describe the problems that arise between these two, and uh, yeah, that will be all. So let's start with the control groups. Uh, control groups are a kernel mechanism, how to uh, group processes, uh, group uh, tasks uh, uh, in, 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 into groups. And uh, from the data model point of view, I want to point out that uh, there can be uh, the C groups form a hierarchy, uh, which is a tree, and there can be multiple hierarchies and uh, each uh, task can be member uh, of more C groups uh, in different hierarchies. Uh, here you can see it uh, on the screen uh, where the C groups hierarchies are accessible uh, via special file systems. Uh, via special file systems, uh, file, file systems and uh, uh, there can be attached uh, so-called controllers to these C groups, uh, which then can apply some policies uh, or somehow act on the processes uh, in the C groups. Uh, the controller that is attached to the C group hierarchy is passed as an option to the uh, mount command. Uh, you can see here uh, there are three different hierarchies. Uh, I want to point out the first one. Uh, if you look at the last option of the mount, uh, there is just name equals systemd. Uh, this is so-called named hierarchy uh, that has no controller attached to it, and it serves just for the purpose of uh, grouping the processes together. And uh, if you want to check the uh, C groups the a process is in, uh, you can uh, check it in the procfs file system in that file. You can see that this uh, sample process uh, is in multiple hierarchies, as I said, and uh, uh, not all hierarchies are the same. Uh, yeah, as was already implied in the first slide, uh, the API to C groups is via the special file system, and each C group is represented with a directory. And uh, then there are some special files uh, in general C group. Uh, the most interesting to us uh, are the C group procs and uh, C group tasks, uh, where there is the list of processes or uh, tasks uh, that are in the C group. Uh, I want to mention this that uh, the original C groups, uh, version one, work with the thread granularity. Uh, the C, uh, tasks are what are put into the C groups. Uh, I also want to mention that there exists a new C groups API uh, called C group V2 or the unified hierarchy, uh, where it is a bit different, but not so different uh, from the point of this talk. Uh, the main difference uh, is uh, that there is only a single hierarchy and uh, the controllers are, uh, are enabled or disabled on uh, individual subtrees of that hierarchy. And the second uh, important difference is that there is no more the task hierarchy, uh, task granularity. It works with all processes. Uh, another interesting API. Uh, are the sockets, uh, are Netlink sockets uh, for, with special address group uh, called uh, uh, CNID IDX proc, uh, which allows a user space application listen to events related to process creation. 
Here you can see the list of the events. The most important for us is uh, the proc event fork and proc event exec. So that was the interaction of the uh, kernel interfaces. Now uh, let's mention the libcg. libcg uh, is a, a project that consists of uh, several components. Uh, I will mention uh, the two most important one and mention uh, uh, some components. Uh, the first one is uh, CG config parser, uh, which allows the user to define the structure of C groups and uh, then attach uh, the controllers to these uh, hierarchies, to these defined structures. And it also ensures uh, that the hierarchies are mounted in the desired uh, path in the file system. Uh, so this defines the structure of the groups. And the second component, very important, uh, is the uh, CG rules engine daemon that, uh, that builds upon that API I mentioned before. And it applies specific rules on processes. Uh, the rules are defined uh, in text configuration file. Uh, here we can see that uh, it uh, is quite rich what we can specify. Uh, the first column specifies uh, the type of the processes. The second column specifies uh, the controllers or the hierarchies. And the last column specifies uh, where is the destination in the hierarchy. So the first row says that uh, all processes of uh, users from the group students uh, will be put under the C group uh, students slash and the username of the user. And uh, it will apply to the hierarchies of uh, CPU and CPU accounting controllers. The second row uh, demonstrates another uh, interesting uh, feature. Uh, it applies just to the processes of uh, user student, but not all processes, but only processes that runs uh, that run CP command, and it will apply to all all controllers, and it will be put under the specific hierarchy. So that's to demonstrate what is possible with libcg. Uh, so this all happens automatically, and then there are also uh, manual helpers uh, where you can start when you can start your processes uh, in a C group that you specify, and uh, then there is some kind of uh, batch mode instead of the CG rules engine where you can classify given processes according to the configuration. Uh, yes. Now, uh, the system D stuff. So, uh, yeah, when I'm talking about system D here, so I mostly uh, mean PID1, unless I uh, specified otherwise. So, uh, system D uh, does that, it mounts uh, the C group file systems, and uh, it makes sure that uh, all the processes it's somehow aware of are put into the specific C group. Uh, from the in, or in the abstraction of system D, uh, the units that run some processes are services and scopes. But also, uh, there are units that run some processes implicitly. For example, mount units also run processes, and those are also put under specific uh, C groups. Uh, yeah, and system D uses uh, the C groups uh, to track the processes so that it knows uh, what processes are part of which service and it can detect when the service, for example, terminates. And uh, it also is used to realize uh, the resource limit. Uh, probably, uh, uh, you know, the infamous PID controller, uh, which happened uh, in C12 SP2 uh, with introduction of systemd we, we 228, where the default uh, for the service C group was just uh, 512 uh, tasks, uh, which was not enough for some services that uh, spawned uh, many threads. Uh, 
now uh, the systemd uh, maintains a hierarchy which you can uh, see in a quite readable form with the systemd cgls utility uh, uh, the, the hierarchy in the terms of uh, systemd consists of inner nodes those are so called slice units and uh, the leaf nodes those are scopes and services uh, and on the top level there are three uh, important slices the system slice uh, the user slice and machine slice the init scope is just for the pid one itself uh, the and then we can think about it that uh, each of these top level hierarchies is uh, controlled or maintained by one of the system D demons uh, so the system slice is maintained by PID1. Uh, user slice, which we will look in more detail later, is controlled by login D, and machine slice is controlled by machine D. Now, uh, more details about the user slice. Uh, the processes into this uh, uh, C group are, uh, are classified thanks to the integration with PAM system D which is hooked in the creation of new user sessions and it communicates with login D and login D then creates a special slice for each user and under each slice there are scopes for each session of the user. You can see it in, in the slide and uh, it, systemd login D does one more thing, it starts uh, the systemd user instance. Uh, here I want to demonstrate uh, one thing. Uh, from the point of view of PID1, uh, system the user instance is just an ordinary service, but it specifies uh, the directive delegate yes, and it means that such a service can partition its C group as it needs. Uh, so you can see that uh, the user instance runs user services and there is another hierarchy of the C groups in the uh, systemd uh, uh, terms. Yes, so that uh, that was uh, the interaction about the systemd. Now uh, let's move on to some problems that uh, are with these approaches. Uh, First one, uh, uh, at first uh, when I learned about this API, I thought that it's uh, great when you get such notifications and you can classify processes, for example, by the executable so that you can put all your CP commands into one C group. Uh, I mean, uh, it needn't be CP command, it can be something else. Uh, but there is a problem because uh, the the classifying daemon, daemon listens for the events and uh, when it is notified about the event it needs to uh, get information about the process from procfs and then uh, uh, do the classification but the actual process runs in parallel so uh, do, do you see what is the problem with this uh, i see uh, some 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 people are nodding. So um, the there is no ordering between the classification and the execution. So if uh, we want to classify the process in a C group with restricted memory, uh, it may happen that the process uh, will uh, run soon enough so that it allocates the memory, and then we will put it into the C group, but it will be above the limits. So. The solution to this problem or solution is uh, to avoid such racy uh, API and uh, do the things in an orderly fashion so that uh, we first uh, classify the process, which might be just some helper process that was created soon after fork, and only then we start uh, the main program. Uh, with systemd, uh, you can use the utility uh, systemd run and specify, specify the slice, effectively the C group where you want to put your, uh, 
where you want to put your process. Okay, another problem. Uh, this is a quote from Bagsla, uh, that CPU quote of CG config doesn't work after support config, support config execution. Uh, support config is a tool that is used to collect information from the user systems, and uh, yeah, one would somehow assume that it uh, does just, uh, or that it would work in read-only mode, that it would not affect the system. And uh, what is more, how, how can it affect the C groups where a process is running? It's quite uh, mysterious. Uh, but uh, to, be, uh, to be honest, uh, the, the C group the process was running in uh, was uh, done in a bit strange way where uh, system D service uh, did not start the process itself, but it start with the CG exec wrapper. Uh, so that that CG exec wrapper put the process into a different C group than uh, system D dedicated for it, and it worked until uh, support config was run. And uh, the cause was that uh, support config uh, called some commands to uh, determine the host name of the, of the machine and uh, this command uh, called ho hostname D, which is a uh, dbus activated service. And this service was activated because it was not running before. And uh, this service uh, specifies uh, uh, some limitations on its uh, C group, uh, uh, some limitations on its uh, uh, C group so it had to be realized. But how, it is, how is this implemented uh, in system D? Uh, first, on top, you can see that uh, uh, the restrictions to the, C group, to, the, to the main C group are applied, and then also the restrictions to the sibling C groups are applied too, uh, because uh, they somehow share the resources. So, uh, at first, uh, when the user service was started in a, a different C group with CG exec, it worked. But then, when the hostname uh, the service started, it applied uh, different restrictions on its uh, on its C group. But System D was uh, working through all the siblings of the C group and was reclassifying the processes, so it returned the. Uh, the user process into the C group that was de designed for it. So, uh, yeah, and uh, basically, uh, this happened because uh, System D in its documentation or user documentation uh, claims that uh, they should be the only uh, they should be be the only writer to the C group uh, file systems. So. By running CG exec, it implicitly uh, modified the state, so nothing, nothing then was valid. No, no assumptions we had about uh, process membership were valid then. Yeah, but uh, I did not mention it in the beginning. Uh, libcg is uh, slowly uh, fading out. Uh, it, for example, does not even support uh, C groups uh, version two. And uh, much of the use cases uh, covered by uh, libcg can be converted into the systemd uh, semantics. Uh, yes, uh, uh, here uh, it was is, is worth mentioning that in SLE 11 there was no systemd, so there was apparently not the conflicting problem. Uh, in SLE 12, until SP3, there were both uh, libcg and uh, systemd. And since uh, SLE 12, SP4, and SLE 15, uh, there is no libcg, there is only systemd. Yeah. But there is the problem that uh, systemd uh, does not cover all the use cases that were possible with libcg. Uh, I'm not aware of all the use cases uh, because 
every user can have their own way of using them. Uh, what, uh, what I identified is that uh, it's not possible to uh, classify the processes dynamically. But uh, as we have shown previously, it's not a good idea because uh, the, the classification is not reliable because of the race. And uh, the second thing that is not possible uh, with systemd is uh, classifying the processes uh, into some uh, template groups. Uh, as I showed with the students uh, uh, group, uh, the processes were put into the C group uh, defined by the username. This is somewhat possible with uh, PAM systemd, but it only creates one-to-one uh, -one, uh, mapping between users and C groups. It's not possible to group multiple users under one C group. Uh, yeah, there were some upstream discussions about this, but they are not very live, so it's still in such a state. Uh, and the last problem that is related to the classification uh, is uh, usage of uh, pseudo or similar uh, UID switch switches in, in its scripts. Uh, system D is uh, backwards compatible with init script. Uh, by the way, of um, creating uh, temporary units for such services. Uh, and uh, such temporary units uh, basically start the init script and uh, then it acts as a normal systemd service. But uh, such services usually use uh, sudo to switch the user that the service is running under. And uh, in the default configuration of the pump stack, uh, sudo uh, involves call to pump systemd. And uh, this, in effect, uh, moves the processes from the service to the user slice. So, as I mentioned, uh, systemd uses uh, C groups to track the processes. So, in this state, it effectively uh, thinks that the C group might be empty of the service, and also the resource limits that we want to apply to the service do not apply. So, there are some obvious solutions out to this. Uh, if we want to change our services. First is we can port the uh, init script into the service unit and specify it in the systemd language. Or if we don't want to do such big changes to the init script, we can use the set pref utility, which just switches UID and does not invoke the PEM stack. Or the alternative is uh, to take out pump systemd from the uh, pump configuration so that uh, even with pseudo calls, the processes still remain uh, in the same C group. Uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a question if uh, what it should mean uh, uh, for the service when it's running under a different user, if it should be still under the system slice or under the user slice. So uh, it's also a point for discussion. Yeah, so uh, the, this is a summary of uh, the presentation. Uh, we saw that the uh, C groups are universal, uh, the API, uh, that libcg uh, provides uh, rich possibilities, but not so reliable, uh, that systemd is probably now the only way how to uh, interact with C groups uh, compatibly, and we have to use uh, features like delegation, and uh, that uh, hopefully uh, libcg uh, use cases can be converted to systemd, con uh, systemd uh, configuration. So, uh, yeah, and since there are some points that uh, might not be clear or are interesting to discuss, now it's uh, some time to, for your questions. Okay. 
Uh, it sounds strange to have two uh, independent processes controlling that uh, independently of, of each other anyway. So, uh, strange that it ever works, I would, I would say, anyway. Uh, ah, thank you. Think so. Ah, ah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It sounds strange to have two independent controlling processes for, for things like that. Um, um, but um, so I, I'm wondering why it ever worked, basically, uh, to have um, system D in one hand and then uh, uh, these uh, Ziggy rules engine D on the other hand. Um, the, oh, but uh, wouldn't it be possible to have a um, system D option to like exempt a certain uh, Process from system D uh, uh, C group control, so that that thing process which you had where where the problems occurred would um, controlled by by something else basically. Uh, yes, um, it is a bit weird that uh, we had uh, libcg and system D together, and uh, the suggestion uh, you have. Um, might work. It might be with that uh, delegate uh, option, where a specific C group or subtree would be dedicated to libcg, and uh, then uh, systemd wouldn't touch the processes under this uh, subtree, and libcg should only touch processes in this subtree. Then it should work. But um, I would say that we sh should be able to make it uh, without libcg. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, I, as I said, it, it's hard to understand why we had both of them at the same time at, at all, <laughs> I would say. But then probably the reason was that some software, third party or not, needs libcg for whatever reason, for, for legacy or whatever. And um, then uh, so we, we didn't do the switch immediately from, from one to the other. So, and so if we have both, we would need to make sure that they can coexist somehow, either, either way, or we can only have one, right? <laughs> yeah, it's also some uh, friction during the uh, per, uh, transition, so uh, probably Misha over there. Okay, so there are basically two reasons why they two two of them exist. Uh, the one is historical, that a libcg process uh, it's much more older or, uh, older than than systemd, uh, and it used to be the thing to use before systemd took over basically the world and beyond. And how they can do coexist is a bigger problem because systemd tends to think that everything in the world just uh, belongs to its proper. Uh, there used to be a document how to basically behave just to make multiple users of the same uh, uh, C group hierarchy. And it worked until, you know, those different decisions to, uh, that were made. But uh, yeah, the main problem with uh, libcg is that uh, the project basically has been abandoned by the, the um, uh, upstream and yeah, so it's gone. But um, until then, the only reasonable workaround is to basically not use it with uh, systemd long. Which means not using it at all in, in current systems and distributions, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you can use it in Sleet 11 as before. Okay, so if there are no more questions, I think we are just, uh, yeah, just at the end of the time slot. So thank you.